Welcome, Earthers, Martians, Belters, members of the OPA, to the first episode of Expanse, the unofficial podcast. I'm your host, Lex Starwalker, and with me today is your co-host, Nikki Starwalker. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the show, Nikki. Thank you. I'm really excited about this. Yeah, me too. Uh, We're really excited about the podcast, and we're really excited about the show, The Expanse. Yes, definitely. So hopefully, if you're listening to this right now, you already know what The Expanse is. But just in case, The Expanse is an upcoming show on the Sci-Fi Channel. It's going to be coming out December 14th and December 15th. We get two episodes the first week, which is awesome. And my understanding right now is that the regular night will be Tuesday nights. And this is coming from Dominique Tipper, who is playing Naomi Nagata. I follow her on Twitter. So I I wouldn't say that's 100% because, you know, I don't know how in the loop the actors are about, you know, what sci-fi is planning. But for now, we'll we'll go with that. It's going to be on Tuesdays. And it's based on a series of novels by James S.A. Corey, which is actually two people, Daniel Abraham and Ty Frank. We're fans of the books, and we're really looking forward to the show. Yeah, and if you're confused about why James S.A. Corey is actually two people, there are videos online that you can watch, um, one that I'm thinking of in particular that I will uh, link to in the show notes, and the two authors explain how they set it up and why it's set up that way. Yeah, and I, I suppose this is as good a point as any to plug our Google Plus community. So you can head on over to the website for this show at starwalkerstudios.com slash expanse. And there we will have a nice prominent link to our Google Plus community, which I encourage everyone to join. And we've had that going since July, I think. And anytime we find any kind of trailer or video interview with the authors or actors or anything at all Expanse related that we think you might be interested in, we post it there. So if you're kind of new to The Expanse or you just haven't had a lot of time to see what's out there, that's a great place to go. And that video is there. There's there's a couple videos there, I think, with interviews with the authors and really interesting stuff. Yeah, I just love hearing about how they came up with the series. And I like hearing from the actors and why they're excited to be in this series, this TV show. And uh, I definitely want to post some polls in there. I think that we have had one going on the books and I want to do future polls and then I can talk about the polls and the results on the podcast and just give everyone a chance to hear what people are reading or what they're excited about in the show. Yeah. So let's start out just talking briefly about the books. But before I do that, we should talk about just what this show is going to be. I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. So this is an unofficial (laughs) fan (laughs) podcast for The Expanse. And I just want to be very clear that this is unofficial. We have no connection or affiliation with James S.A. Corey or the Sci-Fi Channel or I'm blanking on the publisher of the books, but but we have, we have no official connection or relationship with anybody involved with the books or the TV show. And I just want to be clear about that because already there's been a group that I'm not going to name, but there's a quote unquote fan group uh, that has a website and they're on Twitter and they've been very naughty. Um, <laughs> they Well, first of all, they did a scam like fake launch of the TV show. They were posting all this stuff about the show was launching. This was like back in July or something. Yeah. Got a bunch of people riled. Um, They're currently selling t-shirts. Is it the same group? I'm pretty sure it's the same group. Oh, wow. Or maybe it's two different groups, but there's a group right now selling t-shirts and they're not licensed. They're infringing on IP. I have no idea if there's litigation in progress. I would assume There is, but both Ty and Daniel have tweeted on Twitter that, you know, this is not sanctioned, it's not official, and they're basically ripping off their copyright. So I just want to be very clear from the beginning that, you know, we are not official. (laughs) We're not trying to rip off anybody's copyright. 
but we're a couple fans of the books and we anticipate being huge fans of the show. Everything we've seen about it just looks amazing. Now, some of you listening might have been lucky enough to have already seen the pilot because the pilot was screened at San Diego Comic-Con just this week when we're recording this. It was screened at New York City Comic-Con. And I've been seeing a lot of stuff on Twitter of people who have seen the first episode and are just blown away by it. Honestly, I'm glad I haven't seen it because... It's like you see the pilot and then you have to wait until December <laughs> to see the the second episode. And those of us that are seeing it when it comes out in December, we're going to get to see the first two episodes back to back Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. And then we only have to wait six days to see the third episode on the, or I guess seven days on the following Tuesday. So I'd much rather be in that boat on it. Obviously doing a podcast, it would have been nice <laughs> if we could have seen it, but then we'd be so tempted to spoil that first episode for you, which we wouldn't want to do. And that's kind of the, the big point I want to make about the show is we are not going to spoil the TV show for you. I've read all the books. I haven't read all of the short stories and novellas and, and whatnot yet, but I've read all the novels. Nikki's read about half of them, I think. Yeah. So we could very easily get on here and just start talking about what happens in the books and possibly spoil the TV show for you. But we're not going to do that because that that would be kind of a jerk thing to do. So obviously right now we can't say a whole lot about the TV show because it's, it hasn't happened yet. So what we're going to do while we're waiting for the show to come out is we're going to start talking about the cast and the characters Mm -hmm. Um, And again, we're going to be very careful not to spoil any plot elements or anything like that or any reveals about the characters. So, you know, if you're someone that like you hate spoilers, I hate spoilers. You know, you can listen to this and and not worry that we're going to drop some bomb from the books and like, (laughs) you know, like Game of Thrones telling you that a, a certain very prominent character dies at the end of the the first book. Like, we're not going to do that. Like, I, I don't know if that happened. I'm sure someone out there spoiled that for people watching the first season <laughs> of Game of Thrones. And even now, notice I'm not giving you yeah. a specific, because there might be someone who hasn't watched Game of Thrones yet. Yeah. So we're not going to do that. But once the show comes out, then what we're going to do is every week we'll talk about the episode that just came out. Mm-hmm. So obviously, when we make our podcast episode about episode one of the TV show, that's going to spoil episode one. Mm-hmm. So you're n- you're not going to want to watch that till after you've seen the show unless you don't care about spoilers. Yeah. But again, we won't be spoiling episodes that haven't come out yet. That's right. And the nice thing about our podcasts at Star Walker Studios is that you, Lex, edit all the podcasts. So even I if do. there's a, a slip up, yes. an accidental we'll slip up, it. it won't get into the final cut. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And and if I ever have any doubt, I'll ask Nikki, you know, should I cut this out? Is this a little too spoilery? <laughs> <laughs> I did want to jump in and say that we're mentioning Twitter a lot. Um, it's a great place to get news about The Expanse from the authors and directly from the producers of the television show. Yes. So I highly recommend following James S.A. Corey on Twitter, and that seems to be controlled by Ty Frank. Yes, because Daniel authors. has his own personal Twitter that he right. tweets from. Yeah, yeah. And I was going to say definitely follow Daniel as well. And we will, um, I'll, I'll put in the show notes, Twitters for... Ty and Daniel, as well as the official Expanse Twitter from the Sci-Fi Channel, as well as there's a Twitter account for the writers collectively for the show, yeah, as well as Twitter accounts for the various actors that are playing the leading roles. We'll, we'll have all that in the show notes for you. Yes. And it's fun to follow them just to see their excitement and their behind the scenes photographs and things like that. Now, unfortunately, none of them really seem active on Google+. Plus. Personally, I'm much more of a Google Plus person than than Twitter. Um, So I'm a little disappointed that there's not really much Expanse content on Google Plus other than what we put on there. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, Twitter, um, if you do Twitter, definitely you can get a lot of information. Ty and Daniel, Ty especially, does a really good job of just retweeting anything noteworthy that he sees, whether it's from one of the actors or from a fan that tweets at him. Um, so, you know, you follow the James S.A. Corey Twitter account and that alone keeps you pretty up to date on what's going on. Or like if there's going to be a screening at a at a convention near you, 
that's a, mm-hmm. that's a great way to find out about it. Yes. There's also an Expanse Wiki that we'll link um, that has some good information. And that's actually what we're going to use today to remind ourselves of the various books and short stories and what order they take place in. Because basically there's a series of novels. So far there's, I'm not even sure off the top of my head how many there are, six? Yes, there's the sixth one will be coming out in 2016. Okay, so there's, there's five out right now. And the fifth one, Nemesis Games, is out in hardback right now. And those all, at least so far, I've read the first five, are chronological, like book one, book two, book three, and so on. However, there are also a few uh, short stories slash novellas slash novelettes, <laughs> depending on the <laughs> length. And those are prequels to the books. And you definitely do not need to read those to enjoy the books and you don't need to read them. Well, you don't need to read anything to enjoy the show. I'm sure they're going to start from square one. But I just saw a tweet from somebody involved with the show. I think it was James S.A. Corey. I think it was yesterday saying that they are going to be incorporating some of the material from the prequel (gasps) short stories into the TV show. Cool. Which I kind of speculated they would. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. That's very cool. I love the little fan service there to say, yeah. hey, if you read it, you're going to get something extra out of this scene. Yeah, totally. I can actually go through this list that I found on Goodreads. Um, I like their little list because they kind of break out where in chronological order the short stories fall in between the novellas. So the first one they call point one, and that is Drive. Yeah, and that's the one I've read. Okay. Okay. And I haven't read that one yet, um, but I heard it was good from you. Is it very short or is it? It's it's a short story. It's very okay. short. So if you've read the books, Drive is a little story about, I forget his first name, Epstein, the guy that invented the Epstein Drive, which, um, okay, so <laughs> if you don't know anything about The Expanse, The Expanse takes place in the near foreseeable future. Now, something interesting here, for the TV show, they are saying it is 200 years in the future. However, in at least one interview that I've heard with James S.A. Corey, who again is two people, I just, it's easier to say that than two names, but Ty and, and and I hate saying Ty and Daniel because it sounds like I know them and and I don't. (laughs) Um, Mr. Abraham and Mr. Frank. Yes. Uh, they were asked, you know, about how far in the future is this? And they said that, you know, they're not going to tell you that. And they had really good reasons for doing that. Um, one of which is it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. Um, but one of the reasons was that science fiction is continuously disproven by advancing technology and sometimes proven by, you know, sometimes they get it right and they predict some new technology and, but a lot more, more often they're, they get something wrong. <laughs> and so, you know, for instance, uh, like cyberpunk, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of the cyberpunk is all about like hardwiring yourself into a computer to control it and all this stuff. And it's like, well, that was great back in the day, but nowadays like that just seems really stupid because we have Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. You know, and and so any story that's supposed to be set in the future, but someone has to find a, a physical hookup to something <laughs> just seems anachronistic to us now because we're like, well, surely in the future they'd have Wi-Fi or something even better. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, to avoid that kind of thing and to avoid them saying, oh, well, in 200 years, we'll have totally colonized the solar system. And well, it ends up taking 300 and then people or like, oh no, or or saying, oh, in 200 years, we'll have this level of technology. And then some physicist says, oh no, that would never happen. <laughs> so they kind of avoid that and they kind of hedge themselves as far as just things being disproven out of hand. They didn't want to say, you know, this is exactly when in the timeline this takes place. But then okay. for the TV show, they're saying 200 years. So I actually tweeted at James S.A. Corey, which I, I think is Ty Frank, Uh, I think it was yesterday, and I asked them about this Mm -hmm. because I was like, you know, I know you guys have said in interviews that you don't want to say how far in the future this is exactly, but for the TV show, they're saying 200 years. Do you now consider that quote unquote canon for the books? Right. Or is that just some kind of concession that you had to make for for sci-fi that they wanted a number? 
And I really liked his response, which was basically, he said that anytime he hears someone say the 200 years, he just mentally adds an ish to the <laughs> end. So 200 ish years in the future. Okay. So, so I like that. In the books, they never give a date. They never give any indication of when exactly this is. So um, as far as the show, I would take the whole 200 years thing with a grain of salt. But yeah. about that, so we're looking at, you know, we've colonized the solar system. There are people living on Mars in mm -hmm. domed cities. There are people living on the moon. There are people living on various other places in the solar system, like in the asteroid belt and, and different moons of like, uh, like Jupiter and Saturn and stuff. Mm -hmm. But there's no warp drive. There's no hyperspace. There's no aliens. Um, <laughs> you know, there's no, none of that kind of magical sci-fi tech that we're like, well, we don't really know how, how that would work. So the one thing that they do have is, is the Epstein drive, yeah, which is basically a very efficient, I believe, fusion based rocket engine. So the, the ships in the show, you know, they don't have magical artificial gravity like you see on Star Trek or Star Wars. I don't think any of the ships actually have gravity. If a station has gravity, it's because it's spinning, right? Yeah. They call it spin gravity in the show, but, but okay. it's where you're using centripetal force to create artificial gravity by spinning something really fast. Mm -hmm. The ships have thrust gravity, which is basically the floor of the ship is pointed towards the, the ass end of the ship <laughs> so that when the ship is accelerating that is producing a gravity effect. So if you think about when you're in your car and you just gun it, you know, taking off how it kind of pushes you back in the seat, mm -hmm. that's thrust because the car is pushing you forward and your body is at rest and so is resisting that and you feel that like pushing against the seat. So if your car was a spaceship, the back of your seat would be like the floor of that deck and when okay. it's accelerating, then it produces a, a gravity effect. And they actually refer to the speed of the ships in gravities, you know, so we're at a 2G acceleration, which means like it feels like you weigh twice as much as you would on Earth because you're accelerating so quickly. I love that. Yeah. So, so the Epstein drive is just merely a, a very fuel efficient fusion drive um, that made the colonization of the outer parts of the solar system possible. And so Epstein was the guy that invented this. And so the drive short story, wow, this is a really long <laughs> explanation of this. The drive short story is just the tale of his kind of maiden voyage uh, with his prototype drive. Okay. So it's, you know, you don't at all need that to understand the show or the books, but if you're really into the universe, then yeah. it's a really cool thing to read. And yeah, it's, I mean, you can read it in under an hour. I'm sure it's, it's okay. really short. Okay, I'm definitely going to get it in ebook form. And then the next one oh, after oh, that. Oh, wait, before you do that, you can sure. actually get Drive for free, and we'll have a link to that in the show notes as well. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think it's on the Sci-Fi's website, on Sci-Fi Channel's website, but they have where you can just read it online for free. Oh, sweet. You okay. can also, uh, all of these you can get through Amazon in electronic format. Drive is actually also, you can get in print format as part of an anthology, which is what I got. Um, okay. But right now you can read it for free. Oh, excellent. So you have it in print. I can just grab that. Yes, <laughs> yes that one I have in print. <laughs> okay. And then the next one is called The Churn. And that is called Expanse Point Two on Goodreads, which is kind of fun. Did you read The Churn? No, but um, I have the wiki right here so I can look real quick what it's uh, about. Okay. Okay. So this is a prequel story about Amos Burton. So he's one of the main characters. Um, he's kind of the, the tough of the group. So, so the main characters of the show are, well, most of them are members of a crew of a ship called the Canterbury which is a water hauler, well, ice hauler, actually, but it's for the water. So, so it goes out to the asteroid belt and chunks off a big chunk of ice <laughs> and then carries it, you know, where, where water is needed out in the, in the solar system. 
And so they're all crew members on this ship. And Amos is, he's the mechanic. Mm -hmm. So he's really good at fixing things, but he's also, you know, the big, burly, violent, tough guy kind of <laughs> character. So, so this is a story about him, something that happened with him before this whole series happened. Yeah. Okay, great. I love that character. He's kind of a get it done kind of character. And then after that, we have the Butcher of Anderson Station, which is Expanse Point Five. Yeah. And that I can tell you just from the title is about Fred Johnson. Mm -hmm. Yep. Fred is the, let's see, what can I say about him without spoiling? <laughs> uh, he's a higher up in the OPA, which is the Outer Planets Alliance, I think is what that stands for. Yep. Uh, so basically in the Expanse, you have, you kind of have three basic political groups. You have the Earthers, people that live on Earth. You have the Martians, people that live on Mars. And then you have the OPA, which is an organization that represents people that live in the asteroid belt. They're called belters and people that live on the various space stations and moons and stuff beyond Mars. Mm hmm. So Earth in this is seen as the very conservative, like old school, you know, people that grew up on Earth. And then Mars was like kind of the next, well, probably before Mars was the moon. But I think that's kind of just considered part of Earth. Okay. Um, I'm not sure, actually, like politically where the moon fits into this. Yeah. Um, I think they call it Luna in the, in the books. But mm -hmm. um Mars was kind of like the next place humanity really got a foothold. So it's like not as conservative as Earth, mm -hmm. but still they live, like they say in the books, down a well. They live <laughs> on a planet with gravity. And then you have the Belters, who are people that did not grow up on Earth or Mars, and they grew up somewhere that has far less gravity than Earth and Mars. And this has actually affected them physically to where they have what like longer limbs their their bones are a little more um delicate and brittle mm -hmm. and they have slightly bigger heads right and this is something i'm really curious to see if any effort is made in the tv show to represent that and if so how well they do and yes. how that looks yes i'm very curious too yeah so so yeah fred is involved with the the opa which is a, a political group representing all these people that aren't Earth or Mars based. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I don't really want to go more into it with because I don't want to spoil anything. But, yeah, but that's no, some I setup for that. you. Yeah. And then finally, we come to the first novel, which is called Leviathan Wakes. And that is Expanse number one. And we both read that, Lex. Yeah. So if you are totally new to this and you want to read the books, that's that's where you want to start. Yep, it is excellent. I don't want to give any spoilers. Lex, do you want to give any summary for it? Yeah, so so basically the setup for that book is going to be the same as the setup for the show, which we start out with these group of people on this ice hauler called the Canterbury, which in the book is described as looking like a fire hydrant with <laughs> flames coming out of the back. Uh, but the one for the show doesn't, to me, look at all like a fire hydrant, but looks very cool. Yeah. Which reminds me, there is an app for The Expanse, oh, a yeah. virtual reality app. And uh, you can see the Canterbury and like kind of like you're outside of it and you can move around it and see it from every angle, which is really cool. You can also see Tycho or I think that's how you pronounce it, Tycho Station and oh, Julie's ship. Julie Mouse. Or it's not the Razorback. It's not her her racing ship. It's the uh, the one she's in. Okay, uh, I don't recall the name of it. Yeah, but anyway, you can see that ship as well. Um, for some reason, it's not on the Android version yet. Aww. Um, and I actually I tweeted at James S A Corey like wondering you know how I get the update for Android, and he was like, I don't know how to update the Google Play Store. But you can see it on the iPhone. So I don't know if like he's doing that himself <laughs> and he doesn't know how to do the end. I mean, surely they have some kind of developer doing that. So right. maybe by the time you hear this, it, it'll be on the Android version. But, yeah, that but would that's be that's really cool. And yeah. that works with the, what's it called? Google Cardboard? Google Cardboard Viewer. And uh, you can actually make that at home if you have the supplies. 
And there's a website for that, which hopefully we'll link as well. And they give you uh, a little blueprint of the viewer itself that you can use to make one. And it's fun. Um, I don't, I didn't make one yet. I just uh, like using the app as is. And I like the app because they give you a narration as you're viewing, for instance, the Canterbury. Yeah. I don't think, to me, the Google Cardboard's just kind of gimmicky. You, you, I mean, you don't need it. All it does is cut off your peripheral vision. Like you can just hold your phone in front of your face and right. turn around and stuff. It works just fine because they want to sell you that. Oh, you know, that's okay. something you can buy. Okay. Okay. So, um, <laughs> I keep going off on these tangents. What were we even? Oh, <laughs> the right. the first uh, book. So, yeah. you have this group of people on the Canterbury, and then you have this girl named Julie Mao who is. Uh, her family is a very rich and politically powerful family. They own like this mega corporation called Mao Kwiatkowski or something mm-hmm. like that. I don't even remember what they do, but th- <laughs> this huge, well, I think they do a bunch of different things. I think it's right. like, um, I don't know, like Virgin where, <laughs> you know, they just, they do this and they do anything that'll make them money they're into, you know? So she's like this kind of rich girl, that kind of runs away from her privileged upbringing and they're earth based, right? Mm-hmm. The mouse. And she basically gets into some trouble and uh, goes missing. And that's kind of how this starts is, is kind of looking for her. And I honestly cannot tell you anymore without spoiling some awesome reviews in the first episode and the first season, I'm assuming Assuming the seasons correspond, correspond with the books. Right. Although it, it may take longer. You know, I could see the first two seasons being the first book or something like that. But we'll we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. When they say it's a missing girl story, Julie is that missing yes. girl. But that's as far as we'll take that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because there's some fun in the show that uh, will be revealed. But she's a really cool character that I'm really looking forward to seeing on the screen. Um, because I mean, she's this, you know, rich girl grew up with the silver spoon in her mouth, <laughs> uh, got into racing. So mm-hmm. she has this racing ship called the Razorback and is also like super, super in the martial arts. And like, she's, she's kind of a badass, like with the <laughs> martial arts and, and she's just a really cool, interesting character. And it seems like they may do more with her in the TV show than they even did in the book, which which I think would be really cool. Yeah, I'd love to get in her head a little bit and know more about her. The second one is Caliban's War, and we both read this one as well. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, Lex, do you have a little summary for us? Well, we, we can't really summarize the other books because then we're spoiling things. Oh. Oh, good point. Okay, so let's breeze through this. The third, or actually the one after Caliban's War is a short story. It's called Gods of Risk. So this is Expanse 2.5. The f- sixth book will be coming out in 2016. I don't think we have a month for it yet, but I'm sure we'll be getting it. No, but we do have a title and we have the cover. So again, yep. if you go to our Google Plus page, I, I know I have the cover on there somewhere mm-hmm. and you can find that. So yeah, so there's the books, definitely, you know, they're, they're good reads. They're really easy to read books. And yeah, Leviathan Wakes is, is where you want to start if you haven't taken the plunge yet. Yep. So just, just a little bit more, you know, what to expect from this show. Uh, this is going to be a weekly show. We're going to put out an episode every week. And like I, I said earlier, un, until the TV show launches, we're going to spend some time talking about the various cast members and the main characters. Again, keeping it spoiler free, just giving you some some kind of foundational information. And also, you know, regarding the actors, like who this person is and where you might know them from, right? Some things that they've been in before. Some of the actors are, are very well known and then some of them not so much. Mm-hmm. But I think they did a great job with the casting. I'm really, just from what I've seen of the actors, I think, you know, they really kind of fit the characters for me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then once the TV show launches, then, you know, we'll have companion podcast episodes for each episode of the TV show, which means 
uh, the week of December 14th and 15th, we're going to put out two episodes because we're getting two episodes of the show. Now, um, a lot of times TV shows will take breaks. I'm kind of wondering, because a lot of times they take a break over the December, January, like holiday season. Um, I really hope they don't do that since they're starting <laughs> in the middle of December, like <laughs> put out like three episodes and then take a month off or something. Hopefully they won't do that. But if or when the TV show takes a break in the middle of a season, then we may still put out episodes about if there's something we can talk about that's not spoilery or or we may take a break too. I don't know. And I don't think we know yet how many episodes are going to be in a season of the show. Mm-mm. I'm assuming around 10, but I mean, there's no, uh, it used to be way back when there was kind of a standard, you know, how many episodes were in a season, but now it's like some shows do eight, like True Detective only does eight episode seasons, like Mm -hmm. Game of Thrones does what, 10? Yeah. You know, there's still shows like Supernatural that do like 20 some episodes in a season. So, I mean, there's really no way to know. I'm just guessing around 10. Mm Mm-hmm. And also, you know, will there be multiple episode or multiple seasons in a given calendar year? Are they going to wait till December of 2016 to start season two or, or what? I mean, we have no idea. So, so we'll have to kind of decide as we go, you know, what we do with this podcast. But, you know, if there's like six months of no new TV shows, I, I don't think we're going to podcast for six months. We'll, we'll run out of stuff to talk about. So I just wanted to mention that not only can you find us on the uh, Google Plus group, but I think Lex mentioned the website and on Twitter, we're both active, but we do Beer Tasters, which is another podcast that I'm on and that's pretty fun. And Lex has a couple other podcasts that you might be interested in, especially if you play tabletop role-playing games. So do check out Starwalker Studios And um, there are tons of blog posts and show notes for all sorts of things. It's kind of a a black hole of awesomeness. (laughs) So yeah, uh, the website for this show is starwalkerstudios.com slash expanse. All my podcasts are at starwalkerstudios.com. You mentioned Beer Tasters, Game Master's Journey. Those are are the two big ones uh, right now, other than this show, of course. I'm also on Twitter, at Lex Starwalker. And I'm at Nikki Starwalker. And we're both on Google Plus. Just search for us there. And yeah, definitely go check out the show notes for this episode. And we'll have all kinds of links to the Google Plus community, all all the different uh, people involved with the Expanse, their their Twitter handles and the Expanse Wiki, the official site, all kinds of stuff. And maybe, I don't know, should we just embed some of those videos in the show notes so people don't have to go find them on Google Plus? Yeah, I think that'd be great. So so yeah, well, I'll go through the Google Plus and I'll find the best of the best of the videos and interviews and trailers and we'll just embed all that. It's going to be a crazy, uh, <laughs> crazy show note for the first episodes. There's going to be all kinds of stuff there for you to, to check out. You can also email us at expansepodcast at gmail.com. Of course, uh, the show will be available on iTunes, Stitcher, anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can also listen on the website. You can download it from the website. We'll have our RSS there if you subscribe that way. So lots of easy ways to subscribe and get the podcast every week. Yep. So I guess that's pretty much it for our, our first episode. In episode Two, we're going to talk about Dominique Tipper, who is playing Naomi, who is definitely my favorite character. I, I love Naomi. Awesome. And I got to say, Nick, Nikki, uh, no spoilers, but you need to get caught up in the book <laughs> because Nemesis Games, <laughs> mm-hmm. which I just finished yesterday, okay, you learn a lot about Naomi and some things about her past and just things that are like foundational aspects of her character and who she is and how she got to where she is that you didn't know before. And it's, it's amazing stuff. So Exciting. you gotta get caught up so we can talk about it. Okay. I will. Not on the show though. Cause that'd be way too many spoilers. Right. <laughs> Which, you know, that's something we have to be really careful because we can't even assume that information will be revealed on the TV show in the same sequence that it is in the books. Mm-hmm. 
So for instance, one of the main characters in both the books and the TV show, Avasarala, who we know for sure is in the first season, is not in the first book. Mm -hmm. So right there, we know that that's something that they're changing with the TV show. They're introducing that character earlier, which I think is a good idea because the actress, (laughs) they got to play her. She's brilliant. I mean, she's so perfect. Yeah. I I wonder how they're going to... how they're going to handle her, as they say, potty mouth. <laughs> I, I did see a tweet yesterday that confirmed that her potty mouth will be part of the character of the TV show. Oh, good. But I'm pretty sure you can't drop F-bombs on sci-fi, can you? I don't they, think so. Yeah, and they bleep the face-off contestants every time they swear yeah. to. So I don't know how they're going to handle that. Maybe they'll do something like they did in Battlestar Galactica and they'll invent some word like frack <laughs> that means the same thing that they that they uh, don't need to to bleep. But they didn't do that in the books. Right. So I'm, I'm really curious. And you might be like, what? What's it matter? But the way she talks is such a part of who that character is and how she relates to the world Mm -hmm. that you just you can't change it without changing the character. Yeah. Um, But she's an awesome character. But like I said, in the book, she's not even in the first book. I'm theorizing that they're going to use her as an exposition vehicle to relay some of the information to us as far as like the earther martian belter thing and how all that works because in a book it's really easy to get that information across but in a tv show you have to do it through dialogue right unless you're going to have like a a a dexter type voiceover (laughs) where the character is explaining things to you you have to do it through dialogue and it might be challenging with the other characters to convey all that information through dialogue. Cause it's a lot of the political stuff isn't things that they necessarily talk about right. on a day to day basis. So her character is a way that even better, instead of having this exposition through dialogue, they can actually show not tell by, by showing her because she's very uh, politically involved mm-hmm. um, with the earth politics. Right. So I'm guessing that's what they're going to use her for. But, you know, right there already out the gate, they're changing because assumably we're going to learn information from her in the TV show in the first season that in the books we didn't learn till later. Right. So we can't even feel like we're safe and saying, oh, well, you know, this piece of information is revealed in the first book. So it'll be revealed in the first season. Like not necessarily. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to err on the side of caution. Yeah. And yeah, because... You know, the last thing I want is to get an email from someone who's pissed because we just ruined the show for them because we told them something that hasn't happened yet. Yeah, it's no fun. Yeah. So part of our prep (laughs) for doing the show is watching each episode multiple times and especially watching it right before we produce the show so that we can be sure that we're remembering the show and not (laughs) something from the book that actually hasn't happened yet. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Feel free to reach out to us, expansepodcast at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. If you have any ideas or requests or suggestions for the show or, or things you'd like us to talk about or cover, definitely let us know or just say hi and let us know what you think. The show's kind of in flux right now. I mean, this obviously isn't like a quote unquote normal episode, um, but even the next few episodes, you know, it's like we kind of have like our prequel <laughs> yeah. or prelude episodes um, that will be one way. And then once the show starts, then, you know, the, the way the show works will will be a little different. But we're just kind of making it up as we go. Yeah, so and change it, is it'll good. It'll work out. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but definitely, you know, we, we'd love to hear from you what you think or just, you know, let us know that you're listening. And yeah, we'll see you next week. Treasure your water and oxygen, I guess, <laughs> for now. So long and thanks for all the fish. <laughs> <laughs>